guys, Ash here with Imagineer Goddess. I'm back again with another deck profile for set 10. And today I'm doing Jewel Knights. Now I might we might be posting multiple people's builds, but uh, this kind of of these clans and all that. But for today, this is my Jewel Knight deck, and uh, you know I'm just kind of post here and let you guys see what you're thinking. Hey, maybe uh, you guys might like it, and you know, give me some feedback to improve it. But uh, just to start off, I run Dreaming Jewel Knight Tiffany. Now she's actually pretty bad. I don't like her that much. But she can give two things plus 3k, which is okay. She lets you go up to 21 on a lot of things. But the main reason I kind of like her, well, one, she's Jewel Knight. Two, she can remove herself off the field and do something. Like plus 3, plus 3. I mean, your other choices are pretty... Mm, I mean, prim goal if I run that, but... Otherwise, uh, she lets you get herself off the field in case uh, you want to use something else, which will, which I'll talk about later. And then for, you know, moving into the triggers, I run four Jewel Knight crit, four regular crit, because I like the eight, eight crit, four draw, four heal lineup. And, um, you know, unfortunately for some reason, um, Bushy thought it was okay for us to have Eradicators getting 8 crit. I know this set came out first, okay? But Eradicators having 8 crit and then Jewel Knights having 4 at this point. Ugh, I don't know what they were thinking. But yeah, 4 crits, or 8 crits, that wins of the game. 4 draws. Uh, I really like the Jewel Knight art. A lot of, a lot of cute Royal Paladin Knight chicks or whatnot. But um, yeah, again, draws draw you into something good. Pluses all over. And then the heal, which I think she's a bit way too chunkily armored, if like, that's the right wording. But yeah, that's, those are the triggers, not really much to say. And moving into the grade ones, of course, I run four of the Jewel Knight Assault Perfect Shields. Um, yeah, it's archetype and it's Assault. It's Perfect Shields, you know, when helps you not lose. Then I run Four Shelly, which are the grade one 10k attackers, but for Jewel Knight, you need like almost a full field for these to be 10k attackers, which make them much worse than regular 10k attackers. So I have no idea what Bushy was thinking. They need to uh, do a retrained version of these girls. Um, it's just the restrictions are too much. But um, so moving on there, I run two Ulians or Udians. And they're the standard cow plus one plus one K. And these are just hurt because of the lack of a better card, really, and a bit more variety in choices, options. Options, you need options. Then I run two Prismi. Again, drop and draw, but huge requirements. Mm, sometimes I use it to clear away a, a Salome, but otherwise, um, they're just there. And then, of course, two Toy Poogles. Now I'm running these because Salome swings for 12k, so you need a 9k booster. That's fairly consistent, and it is pretty consistent, for Salome to be able to hit 21. And she's not a threat unless she's swinging for magic numbers with a double crit after the break right turn. But yeah, that's why I run her. Uh, to her Google. Salome really should have been 11k, but whatever. And yeah, her Google's pretty cool. Um, that's why I also have the Tiffany, or yeah, so that you can get rid of the starter and you can play this behind the Vanguard, because Salome's ability requires you to have a full field of Jewel Knights except for one slot. And moving into the grade twos, I run four Tracy, again very restrictive 12k attacker, which sucks, but hey, um, you know you need the 12k attacker so you can hit hit units without boosters. Well, in Jewel Knight's case, you'll need at least two columns that have boosters. <laughs> then I run four Sybil. Don't really like Sybil that much, but I need the Jewel Knight, and she's okay. I mean, she's like a, a Maka, kind of blessed to get a Jewel Knight, but hey, she's AK. It's terrible. That's, that's that. Then I run Two Galatine, 10k. This exists only so I can ride him. Like I don't want to draw him normally, ever. 
pages are not drill night. You only have a spot for that toy poodle. So everything else needs to be drill night. But these are there for that. And then I play an Olwyn. Um, well, I have one because I only own one. I refuse to buy so many products. So they make a products. But he's okay. 11k attacker if you have a full field, I guess. No, you have to have more of a field than your opponent. That's kind of easy for Royal, but sucks is he's 8k. But he swings 11, so that's pretty cool. And, yeah, I only have one of him. I don't think I'd run more than two anyway, but yeah. Then, of course, grade 3s, 4 Ashleys. This is Break Ride. She gets reversed later on. and gets become pretty fucking badass, but now we got her. She kind of, okay, plus 10, plus 1 crit. It's okay. Swings 13. Uh, I mean, not too special, really. Then, last but not least, Fort Salome. She'd be so much better if she was 11k, but she's essentially a limit break MLB, but she has an ability to kind of bust two jewel knights, call any jewel knight. So, that's how you get your toy pool requirement. You'd call, like, another copy of her or, or an Ashley if you needed her. Um, the Torpo Ghouls are to be activated when you call her. And I, I don't think it's just called, I think it's also when... Yeah, it's an activated boss. You can use it any time. It's pretty good. Um, and she's also pretty nasty when you break right over Ashley for that turn, because it's like, the opponent's going to lose unless they guard or heal. But yeah, that's that. Anyway, guys, um, that's my Jewel Knight deck. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you think, and yeah, see you guys next time.